or I'll break it. <laughs> Just in, I figured in case I ended up in the video, I'd wear my little yellow shirt. We're running. Okay, so this is a basic class on RV pedestal electrical circuits. This is a very typical pedestal where we have a 50 amp for the 50 amp, 20 for the light and the 20, and 30 for the 30. Some pedestals have the night light, some do not. Next, we'll talk about safety. Kill it. Kill it. Oh. To talk a little bit about safety, to prevent yourself from getting shocked, um, you'll notice in here that this is one leg coming in. Down here is the other leg. We have a neutral. And down hidden underneath here is the ground. With the breakers in the off position, this will not have any power to it. With it in the on position, of course it does. Should you be changing a breaker, as soon as you pull this breaker out, it's disconnected from power and it's, it's completely safe to remove the screws. Same thing should you be changing an outlet, as long as the breaker is in the off position, it's safe to replace this outlet. If you're not comfortable doing that, somewhere in the RV park is going to be a breaker that controls an entire row. So you don't want to shut that off willy-nilly because then you're going to turn off power to other people's RVs. So if you can be comfortable working in here without changing off that breaker, that's the best thing to do talk about how to use a multimeter. This is a multimeter because it will do multiple things. We can measure DC voltage, we can measure AC voltage, we can measure resistance. That's basically all you'll need this um, meter to do. So on uh, AC volts, see if I can get in here without blocking the meter. go 122 volt you can't see it can you no. oh there this will work better it's gonna fall again Hundred twenty point four. so that's your voltage scale now we'll talk about Shorts and opens, this is resistance, so you can check to see if a wire's broken, wire's disconnected, or whatever the case may be. So if you have a short, if things are connected, this is what you're gonna see. If it's an open, that's what you're gonna see. That's basically how to use a multimeter. All right, so now we wanna talk about testing outlets. In a pedestal, you're going to have the three we talked about earlier, the 50 amp, the 30 amp, and the 20 amp. These are little testers that are specifically designed to do this. They'll test for any given problem. You can see all the lights that'll tell you good, bad, or otherwise. It also gives us an opportunity to use our meter if we want to actually check voltage. So we're going to turn all the breakers on. And if you'll notice on the 50 amp tester, we have a green light that says everything's correct. On the 30 amp tester, we have the same light. Now on the 20 amp, it actually has a button that you have to press and we get the the, the two yellow indicator lights. And this actually shows us 
that the two yellow are Wrong. correct. So the other, if you do not have these testers, then you can do like we did a while ago and actually put the meter on the, the pins inside the outlet. We have 120 volts there. We also know that we have 120 volts when we measure to ground, which tells us that we do not have an open you ground. Go. You're good. Do the same thing with the 30 amp. The 30 amp is just a big GFI outlet, really. There's our 120 volts across the leg of hot and neutral and across the ground, which tells us we do not have an open ground. We can do the same thing on the 50 amp. I'm gonna go up to the 750 volt range cause I'm gonna measure between the two legs, which should give me somewhere around 220 to 230 volts. Which, 247. 247. I know that from one hot leg to ground is 120 volts. From the other hot leg to ground is going to give me 120 volts. And the same thing to the neutral. So I've now physically tested with a meter from hot to neutral, the other hot to neutral, and both hots to ground. So I know that both of my legs are good. I do not have an open ground. This outlet works perfectly fine. The next thing I want to talk about is circuit breakers. Circuit breakers can fail in one of two possible ways. The first one has to do with the fact that RV parks use circuit breakers as a switch. We turn the 50 and the 30 off in between every guest. So then the guest plugs in and turns the breaker on. When the guest gets ready to leave, turn the breaker off and disconnect. Because it does that so many times, it can actually fail and open up inside. That's easy to test with the breaker on. You test between neutral and the breaker. If you have voltage, it's good you don't, it's bad, change the breaker. The other way that they can fail is from being stressed by RVs drawing too much current. The current regulation portion of this breaker is thermal. So the hotter the breaker gets, that determines when it fails. So on a hot day, when the RVers using all three air conditioners, that's going to stress this breaker. If it's getting old, it will continue to trip. One thing you can do is look at the RV, see what kind of a rig is plugged in, how much current they're using, and actually you can feel the breaker. If it's too hot to touch, it probably needs to be changed. If the customer is not overstressing that breaker, but it continues to trip, it should probably be changed. All right, this is the most common style of circuit breaker that you're gonna find in a pedestal. These are the most common because these are what they call a blade type circuit breaker. It just plugs onto a blade inside the bus quick and easy to change. So the other side of it is a screw for the wire. So if you're gonna change a breaker, you'll notice that in here, these are our two hot legs, top and bottom. So with a blade type, all you have to do is just pull the breaker loose. Now we've pulled it from the two blades. And if you look, you'll see that the top blade is for this circuit. The bottom blade is for this circuit. These are considered phases, and there's a reason for that. 
you'll notice here we have these two wires going down to the outlet when you change them you want to take one wire loose put it on the new breaker take the other wire loose hook it to the new breaker so that you don't reverse these wires and end up with reverse polarity on your 50 amp circuit once your wires are connected and tight you have this little tongue and groove set up and the breaker goes right back in also the 30 amp and the 20 amp breaker work exactly the same way except that you would change one breaker at a time instead of changing a double breaker now we're going to talk about physically changing these outlets if you have determined that you have a bad outlet two screws here two screws up here this folds down to expose your connectors when you get ready to actually change a connector you want to do the same thing you did with the 50 amp breaker remove a wire put it into the new outlet remove another wire put it into the new outlet and so on and so forth you can either put the wires into the loose connector that's new and then unmount and remount or do it the other way around Whichever is the most comfortable for you, it really does not matter. Then once the outlet is changed, you're going to fold this back up, install these two screws, install these two screws, and then put this plate back on. Hopefully, that gives you enough information to feel comfortable to work on an RV pedestal.